I got stored water. So I have these 55 gallon blue drums. I got the pumps for them. I got the hand crank tool to open the tops and that's water prep. Change those out twice a year. I got like seven of them around here. There's a white PF2 filter attachment for the black Berkey water filter elements that goes on the bottom and gets extra added fluoride and arsenic out of the water. You may want to look into that if you've just been ha having the black filter element like what's in there now and that one I'm going to take that one and then I'm going to take a new ceramic one white ceramic it's um, this brand here it's called Dalton ceramic water filter candle and I'm going to take the, this and I'm going to also take this black Berkey one that's new and I'm going to prime them by submerging them in water. You can do that. I'm going to fill this here, this bottom Berkey chamber with clean water and I'm going to go ahead and hold them down in there. There's a technique to prime them that you don't have to squirt water through using your faucet. Because see, my thought is is that you're using these filters to clean your water. You're going to initially start by pumping dirty water into it. It's going to, in my mind, it will slowly leach back residue from that initial prime over time into your water. Because that's got to be in there. So there's, I looked up ways and figured out that you can submerge your filter elements, the ceramic types, in water. So I'm going to use the bottom chamber of this filter and I'm going to fill it up mostly and you submerge those filters and hold them down for 24 hours and then they fill up and prime. And the white PF2 filters for the Berkey, black Berkey filter, the attachment piece, is uh, can be primed with the Berkey hand pump. There's a Berkey pump that has a little ball in a couple tubes attached to it. Your secondary filter there, which those are for added fluoride and arsenic to get that out of your water that the basic ceramic filter might not get out of. It's, it's extra, in which I put them on my drinking water. So that way I can hope at least be sure that we're, I'm doing as much as possible to get it clean. Berkey hand pump primer. You can buy this separate and you can prime this filter element with that. So those are two different priming techniques that aren't the recommended ones by the manufacturers, but doing it this way, you get to clean them or prime them with your own clean water. Um, I didn't like the idea of using the tap to prime these filter elements because I didn't want to leave behind residue in the filter of dirty water. It just seemed uh, counterintuitive. I want to have another one of these five gallon bucket filters. They're really, really good. I'm going to put it here where this one was when I move it downstairs for my prep room down there for nuclear war prepping. I'm bugging in and over here. So this is where I got everything connected, all the hoses around for everything, for watering the spots in here in the grow rooms and then running a hose when I do processing with the animals. I don't keep a hose hooked up outside because of the spigot could freeze so I run it and connect it from here and then there's another hose that connects down to this filter it's an extra added filter to try to get some sediment out of the water before I put the water here into these and then this hose here the stretchy one is connected to this splitter down here there's two splitters kind of wired together and then that they spider out with the hoses and this one fills up these guys over here. Use the clean water to clean everything. I'll use the faucet here with the well water, not no filter, straight to the faucet. And I'll use this to kind of rinse some dirty dishes, but then they come over here to get further rinsed so that they then can be used for me. These trays down here will collect the wastewater and I'll dump that water right into this big old bucket here and then I'll dump that. It could even be used as gray water and for feeding the plants. I don't really need to do that and sometimes I do when there's uh, like if it's the blood water from the animal processing I'll use that sometimes for the plants and I will also do it when there's like coffee grounds and stuff rinsed in there 
and so that uh yeah this tray moves around and shuffles around underneath these filters to catch the water in the same way and i use these every day to fill up my water and my animals water with the gray water you could further filter it too and then like filter it through dirt filter you know build a dirt filter in a bucket uh, uh, drill holes through the bottom of the bucket and then layer sediments of, of, of earth in there and you could filter water real good like that and then run it back through your Berkey's gray water is like wastewater that isn't sewage it's just rinsing things or you know some vegetables some some something some blood water some coffee grounds your gray water is a very good resource if water is in tight supply okay you see I have a Berkey filter element and then there's a ceramic white one and I have them held down with this it's a actually a stainless steel meat grinder but it's the type of uh, it's its shape and its weight will hold these un underwater submerged in clean filtered water and prime these Berkey for 24 hours maybe it could do 20 overnight but I'm doing 24 hours that's how I heard that it was good to do I added a new water element to this Berkey a black Berkey element the official one and I primed it soaked it to prime it but what I did is I let it drip through a full bucket and then I tossed that water or you could recycle it but I tossed it because it may still have a little bit of sediment from the initial prime of submerging in that first round of water so I just didn't use that one I tossed that round and then the second round of water will be good but what I'm doing is I'm letting that first round drip through before I put on the fluoride attachment added filter and then I'm gonna let it drip through a whole nother round so that fluoride filter attachment gets to flush itself of any sediment that's left over from the initial prime and then that will be the third round of water will fill up after those two got to flush one round and then that third round of water is what I'll start to drink buy in bulk from online retailers organic as much as you can trust it and I will one day maybe grow my own grains and flowers and things like that but right now I'm stocking up on that while I can every day that the lights are still on and the grid is good and in check you should be stocking up on essentials things you use all the time and would need you had to live without the grid for generations to come what do you need well you need certain things critical things maybe some good organic toothpaste or make your own toothpaste uh, water filters for the ceramic filter types for the Berkey systems seeds um, the staple foods vacuum sealed mylar sealed so like the beans and the rices and then you got to be in the regenerative mindset knowing that you know their lights may never come back on what do you got to do you got to find water or tap it from your wells shallow wells you got to be able to grow your food sustainably and uh, you got to be able to feed your animals regeneratively meaning no more feed input from the stores from tractor supply or ordering your food online you got to have to grow your animals food or harvest it and that's one big step for me for mankind harvest stuff like hay bales and greens and things to give them for over winter and grains and harvest your grains that you all the grains you can stack for them to keep roach colonies going to substitute protein for them chickens if we can get the animals completely regenerative that's really big step to live without the grid for generations and thrive and produce abundance so the staple crops the potatoes and the winter squash mass of bush beans abundant amounts of those staples and then it's simple and it's bulk and it's sustenance to sustain you and people around you who would given the circumstances trade just about anything at that level so at that level you're looking for more security and uh, more land to produce and community to 
protect each other. And that's what you really want to trade for in a major scenario because what else really matters if you're not alive and breathing in a safe community? You can't produce the food if you're not safe. So you got to get everyone else on the same page. And that's a whole other thing. Work with your community. Even if you're maybe you're not right now so much because it's just the paradigm we're in where everybody's neighbors like don't talk to each other. But it's going to change. <laughs> so just know that and know that you have to be strong, strong willed to know and discern from what's right and wrong to do to build and grow the community and keep each other alive and healthy and produce abundant food. I'm out here cleaning. It got nice today, real nice, so I was able to get the yard cleaned up. A lot of the uh, dogs mess I had to clean and that and I can rake up I really like raking I can rake up this yard and get it clean to grow and I try to get this grass really good and clean you know having the little rabbits running around out here they're dropping manure everywhere and it rakes in and it's gonna add to the life of the soil in such a way I wanted to say over here where I'm cleaning I'm raking out my strawberry patch and I'm gonna pull more plugs to grow inside but these leaves that I'm raking out of here I'm gonna use them as bedding for the animals and what's really nice about this is it's also got the strawberry leaves like some of them are ripping up a little as I'm raking it out and it's gonna be they're gonna be in there too and that'll feed the rabbits and the chickens as well as giving them the natural leaf litter bedding and they'll eat that too here I laid down manure from the rabbits colony and it's got the wood chips some of the uh, straw in there as well but it's a lot of just manure and I did the same in these runs already and got them pretty much clean uh, here so these runs will stay open to grow and they'll grow a bunch of stuff bush beans is gonna be a big focus and kales uh, here from here over to here is where I'm gonna dig the greenhouse and then build the frame and it's gonna be gnarly and then all up in here is the berries so there's some blackberries all right here blueberries you know I had little plants going here all at every section down this fence but the rabbits chewed them they chewed them down to like stubbies but maybe they'll still grow I'm putting all nice rabbit hardware cloth and it'll be down and in the ground some to section this off so rabbits don't get back here anymore it'll all be secure I gotta do this in the pond and then this is all gonna be cucumbers peas and uh, pole beans along these taller trellises that I had tomatoes on last year look see there that's my rabbit that's the culprit he's the one no, one of the ones I have three of them mini rex that hang out out here they're my pet breed so they're cool and then this is the yard the chicken and rabbit yard and then this is the other one for the silver fox right here under this run and then it stops there and opens and then that yard is separate for the chickens and then the New Zealands so the silver fox get all this area and then they get this area over here too that's built for them where they got a bucket tunnel that they go underground to get out it's uh, flooded right now and it was just frozen so they weren't in here at all this whole winter but in the spring and summer they're gonna be all up and in here and then uh, when I put the pond in over here I'm gonna build a duck house and then I'm gonna incorporate that duck house into the colony merge them and then they'll all live together over here this grass should stay growing good the rabbits don't really like rip it up like the chickens do they just eat it down to like stubbies and it still grows I broke ground on the pit which is the sunken greenhouse so it's dug out and then it's got walls of dirt that make it like a pit and you're gonna see lots of it as I build 
and expand and I have already plans to build multiple of these pits and they're going to be thermal greenhouses which are going to be mostly half underground so that you know that's going to hold a thermal mass and it's going to be really good for crop growing and food security this is so affordable it's only costing me 40 bucks in greenhouse plastic to do this pit that I'm doing now and the materials to build the frame for the plastic is going to be made from pallet wood so that's renewable and free recycled pallets that are good pallets break them down and zip those boards all together and customize a frame that's the plan so this is like a free way to make a very secure in my mind right now this is going to be the most efficient and productive redundant and secure system that i can even think of all through the winter i'm thinking it's probably going to stay warm and stay toasty and grow food and as i build and i can easily expand onto these the way that I'm thinking and going to be building, I'm going to be able to expand and make these pits larger if I want to, even after I'm done building them. So this is really cool and exciting for me. And the pond, I'm going to also, I'm building and broke ground on the pond, which is going to be somewhat of a shallow pond, maybe two, three feet, but it's going to be very nice. And I'm going to have streams and a waterfall, and I'm going to try to keep it thawed through the winter with like a heater there's little pond ice heaters that'll melt it but there might even be some in ground heaters and i'm kind of building this pond like a pit also where i'm going to build up the walls out of dirt and then i'm going to put the pond liner in and it's going to hold a thousand gallons or more of water so that's so much water storage as well and I have plans to put my turtles in there and possibly ducks, but probably not ducks this year, maybe next year. I want to get it all built and I'm going to build the duck house. It's thawed enough to where I was able to break a lot of ground today. So um, the pit, look into and do and build is the pit. Past few days it's been really nice. I got some things done. So I moved another hen over here to my under the deck coop. and there's three over here now because they're communal they need to be together you can't just have two or one it's healthier to have at least three chickens hens together i'm putting this uh dirt so i'm doing my my nuke prep and i'm burying back my basement windows so i'm doing that here i got this side one i got a few more around the side they're not as um exposed as this one so it'll be easier take less dirt around the front over in the garden area i'm digging so i'm using all this dirt i'm gonna find place for place for it there here i'm starting to dig the pond and i'm pulling this dirt i'm gonna pull a lot of it over there i'm sprinkling rabbit manure with the bedding but it's it's a lot of concentrated rabbit manure onto the gardens as a fertilizer as as a mulch and to, to prep the beds for the spring in here where these four runs are is where i'm going to put the greenhouse so it's going to be a pit a sunken greenhouse and i'm going to start digging and i'm going to pile up my mound here a pretty pretty nice mound it's gonna be thin but it's gonna be tall and then from there I'm gonna work it into the ground using all this dirt on the inside to make the mound and that'll carve out the pit of the greenhouse as I make the mound here around the back over there it'll be the same type of thing but rounded in an oval fashion and then here is where the other mound is gonna gonna form here and then I'll build the frame out of recycled pallet wood and then I'll put the greenhouse plastic over top it'll be custom 
and the pond. The pond is getting cut and over here is my compost pile that I've started. A nice one back here. I have two of them now. One up front, well two of them up front, but two different sections of the property has compost piles going. Up there and back here. <laughs> Letting my grow room sit and grow for like four days. I'm about to get in here and harvest what I can, whatever's big and needs to be harvested now. It's, what I'm going to do is feed it to the rabbits. Everything that I'm doing this year, I'm focusing on being regenerative and as self-sufficient as possible to be completely sustainable and regenerative, but to have insane abundance where it's almost like people are like taken back like shocked like in awe like how do you produce that much 
and it's all like free. All I got to do is run around and utilize my hands as the creator and the micromanager of the situations here. So I've got rooms set up like this room and then in here I'm going to, I got roach bins which I'm going to be breeding insects, roaches for protein feed source for my chickens and I've been breeding roaches and isopods for a long time for business. I do sales but I'm going to be bulk breeding high intensity like uh, crazy prolific amounts so that I can feed them to the chickens. I want to get the chickens, the chickens inputs need higher protein and like grains even versus the rabbit where the rabbit just eats grass and then like leafy kales and swiss chards, bok choys and lettuces and whatever green tops are, are most of them are edible from the garden. No pepper plants, no avocado leaves, but bean plants are great and the strawberries leaves harvested you cut them whichever you know you got a bulk bunch of strawberries and you can take some leaves here and there and that's what I'm gonna do all season long dry this stuff out cram it down into a hay bale I'm gonna build the template box for the hay bale and then uh, essentially lay a string out in this box and you cram all the green stuff the greens and the grass all the stuff that I, I'll dry it out and then cram it and then that's good over winter I'll have all my own hay bales and they'll eat fresh all season long and even this winter they'll be eating fresh I mean I got the grow room I'll have my pits dug at least one I'm gonna do the one and then parallel to it on the other side of the yard I'll probably end up doing another and I'll work on them and, and bring them closer and closer together to, to the point where it's gonna be like for one pit sitting side by the other one and I'll be able to enter doors right to the left and to the right of me to each pit in the yard that's how I'm thinking I'm gonna do that but for now just do one and see how it goes dig it out you know backfill the walls and then build the frame for the greenhouse plastic and then the pond so the ponds getting done it's gonna be a more of a shallow like two feet three feet and then I'm gonna have the walls built up as well there almost like a pit but it's gonna be built that way for the pond as well so the water level will be higher up in elevation and I'm thinking there's a lot of utility to that because if that's the case and I ever need to tap into that as a reservoir to feed my gardens it'll be up higher in the mound of dirt that I mound around it and then put the pond liner in so it's like I say like a pit almost with the way the dirt will be mounded up and then it'll be a like five feet six feet deep but only two to three feet in the ground underground level and that'll hold a bunch of water as a reservoir and then I, if that's a prep that's the way I like to think I like to have everything has a dual purpose and that goes to the whole re I think that the clever the cleverness in the regenerative nature of things basket full of greens all picked from the grow rooms I'm gonna feed these to my bugs sometimes I come through and I pick just a week ago two baskets full just like this and fed it all to the rabbits they really loved me that day <laughs>